think the first thing is to recognise that ADAS is only one aspect of a local authority. Um, but uh, nevertheless, I think in the main, and partly because of the guidance that exists about the creation of the Director of Adult Services role in about 2005-06, um, I think we share common ground with uh, public health colleagues because I was just looking at it last night again and it talks about um, ensuring there are clear effective arrangements between the NHS housing planning uh, so we are in that sense a natural ally I think uh, for public health and I know there's been lots of comments about you know why is it a lot of local authorities put up as leaders of for linking with public health, um, director of adults, and I think it's that very, that very background about some of our responsibilities. There's also phrases in the guidance about ensuring um, social inclusion and responsibility for the wider well-being of the population with others. And some, some of you may say, well, we haven't done very well, um, but nevertheless, I think it's there in the council, uh, in the council mandate. From an ADAS perspective, we're really positive about the changes, uh, but um, none of us are sighted on the complete landscape, I think. And that's part of the challenge, um, and it's part of the challenge for, for councils. But we are keen to, uh, to shape the agenda going forward, um, in whichever way we can. I think it's already been touched on, local authorities are the local public service with the widest influence over so social circumstances. But we've focused on the different nature of uh, councils um, in two-tier authorities. And I think if we forget about town and parish councils, we do ourselves a disservice in, in there in terms of the offer that they can bring. Um, and we're you know, delighted that uh, we believe that health is uh, everyone's business. And very much picking up the theme about assets. And I think in adult social care particularly, We've gone through a transformation in terms of, we always used to do needs assessments. Um, and now perhaps through personalisation we've you know, woken up to the dawn that actually people have assets of their own that they can bring to the table and their families and their networks and their supporters. So that the cost just doesn't fall exclusively on the local authority or the adult social care department. And again, building on the opportunities that we've got to secure uh, health improvement. There is an issue about aligning the outcomes, and I think people have touched on that that's where the success is, if you can get shared outcomes. But nowhere have I seen children, young people, and learn in terms of outcomes as part of this offer. It's the missing, for me, it's the missing piece in terms of looking at outcomes for the whole population. Um, because as far as I can tell, and I'm sure we've got people in the room who tell me I'm wrong, or I hope they will, DFE hasn't got into that mode of thinking about outcomes in the same way that the other, net, the other frameworks that are, are emerging. Um, and we need to look at, at how that all fits together. Linking into, I think, some of the themes that have come out this morning, we, you know, local authorities are about commissioning uh, and place shaping, and it increasingly local authorities are not about providing services. I think we can see that um, up and down uh, the country and there's a great deal of experience I think within councils as a whole in terms of decommissioning particularly buildings based services and reproviding a community offer and I think again there's an opportunity there to learn although I would never pretend that closing an old people's home is as complex or as difficult as closing a community hospital. Um, but actually, in terms of running businesses, some, those are the things that, that probably have to happen. And people have touched on the importance of um, the JSNA um, and the health and wellbeing plan, and absolutely the, the, the notion that we need to build on the strengths of the community and the people who live within it. Nick finished with, with, with politics and um, you know, if we're going to improve health, we must engage communities. And local authorities, again, I think have got a strong tradition in engaging both with communities and with individuals. Um, and we need to manage the inevitable 
the new world around health will be political. I've only spent three years of my working life working for anything other than a Conservative administration. I've probably worked in half a dozen authorities, and I would say they're not, they're not alike at all, even in, uh, in, in conservatism. Um, and managing the message and working with politicians in a way to get what, what we need um, to deliver in the, in the community with politicians and helping people to understand that it is critical. <coughs> and I actually believe that you know, the movement of public health to local government will, will ascend, uh, strengthen uh, the link in that collaboration. Although perhaps there are, there are issues around the relationships between all in, in the new architecture. And again, for local councils, we're not quite clear how all of these things will work together. And I do think there's a, a slight difference in approach culturally between the Department of Health uh, and the Department for Communities. And we know that uh, Mr Pickles is interested in localism, except when he finds some money for us to empty the bins on a weekly basis. Um, so that's, <coughs> that's a different view of localism. I don't think it's going to be easy. We, again, without labouring the point, with we're nearly sighted on how much money we'll get. Um, but again, a reality is that some of the money is tied up. I mean, the exercise that's just been undertaken illustrated for me the complexity of identifying what is public health spend, the fact that it's in block contracts with, in some cases, community health services providers, and perhaps a particularly drawn to you, <coughs> of trying to take money out to recommission services and a whole chunk of that money is lost in a overhead. And we at local authority level are very good at having corporate overheads. That you can change service delivery but you can't take any money out of the corporate centre because you still need uh, staff. So we're, we're, we're with that sort of problem. The challenging financial position for local authorities is bound to cause anxieties, uh, particularly as we uh, come together. Um, and one approach, one size, won't fit all. Local authorities, 152 upper tier authorities, are completely different in size, shape, um, political nature, um, coterminosity with or without PCT, um, relationships to districts, towns and parishes and so on. Um, so with, there needs to be a pragmatism about what's going to work best uh, within a locality. Um, but one of the things we are sure about is that we must maintain and strengthen, where possible, the public health input into the NHS in terms of clinical commissioning groups and how that fits. And I think, again, a, a point about health premium, that, that whatever the result is, it shouldn't advantage those areas that have the least difficulty. Um, and as an association, that's one of the things that we think is uh, important. And finally, uh, an excellent opportunity, I think, if we can uh, collectively influence the wider architecture together, realise the potential to, to deliver the Marmot aspirations, maintain flexibility in how leadership is transferred, and finally, get to grips with understanding the funding envelope and the opportunities that exist between local government and public health to deliver the offer. Thank you. <coughs>